Back in the Word of God today, we're going to be in Hosea chapter 11. But before we get started, let's ask for words of wisdom from our Heavenly Father in Yeshua, Jesus Christ, the Messiah's precious, precious name. Hosea in the Hebrew tongue means salvation. We know that Jesus Christ came here to bring us that perfect gift of salvation. He came here to show us how to get it done in these flesh bodies. And he came here to overcome the one who has power of death, and that is to say, the devil. So let's get into this and let's see what our Heavenly Father has to say through the prophet Hosea. We know at the very beginning of this book, our Heavenly Father told Hosea to go take a wife of whoredoms. Why would he do that? Because our Heavenly Father needs you to understand his emotions just like you do. If his children are out there hopping in bed with every Tom, Dick, and Harry doctrine there is instead of his word, that hurts him very badly. It angers him. Just like we would have emotions if our spouse was out there running around or, or say we wrote a, a letter to our children and they don't respond. They don't, you don't even know if they read it. That's very painful. That's, that hurts very badly. So our Heavenly Father, has, he wants you to understand the emotions that he has when his children go astray. So let's get into this and let's see what our Heavenly Father has to say through that. Prophet Hosea chapter 11. Verse 1, and it reads, When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. Now, what is this verse talking to? You have to understand that Hosea, meaning salvation, who is he talking about? His son, his only begotten son. Yes, he's mentioned here in Hosea. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 2, and we're going to start at verse 14. Jesus Christ has been born. Uh, the wise men have came, they have brought their gifts, they've worshipped him, and they've turned back going a different way so they could avoid Herod. So let's get into this. Let's see what our Heavenly Father has to say. Matthew chapter 2, verse 14. When he arose, talking about Joseph, the adopted father of Jesus Christ, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed unto Egypt. This is what we came here for. And was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, which prophet, that's prophet Hosea, saying, out of Egypt have I called my son. So yes, the book Hosea, meaning salvation, talks about Jesus Christ here. Our Savior sent here, Emmanuel, God with us, to bring us that gift of salvation. Go back into Hosea now, chapter 11, verse 2, and it reads, And they called them, so they went from them, they sacrificed unto Balaam, and burned incense to graven images. Now, if you don't have a companion Bible, this is very, very difficult to understand. So, Bullinger takes the Septuagint, and he explains to us who these they, them, they are. So, let's read it according to... Bullinger's interpretation of the Septuagint, and it's on page 1220 of the Companion Bible in Hosea and Commentary, chapter 11. I'm going to read it the way that it should be read. As the prophets called them, so they went from me. Israel sacrificed unto Balaam and burned incense to graven images. That's why it's very important to have a reference to give you an idea of who all these people are. They then, why this was interpreted this way, I'm not sure. But that's why we've got to have those references so we can bring the truth out of the Word of God. I'm going to go over real quick to 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 16 for an example exactly what's going on. 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 16, and it reads, And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove, and worshipped all the host of heaven, and served Baal. Now, many people say, well, we don't do anything like that now, but they don't understand on the highest holy day of Christianity, which is Passover, you got people out there pushing Ishtar, the Easter bunny, the little kids carrying baskets full of eggs of fertility. That's Baal worship. That's coming away from our holy, heavenly Father 
who sent his only begotten he, son here to bring us salvation, and they're out there making a mockery of it. The highest holy day of Christianity is Passover, not a graven molten image, Ishtar. Back into Hosea, chapter 11, verse 3, and it reads, I taught Ephraim also to go, taking them by their arms, but they knew not that I healed them. You know, you can hear, you can think of a, a young child, father saying, I took Ephraim by his arms, taught him to walk. But they knew not that I healed them. You know, we got to go in. Let's go back into, uh, let's go into Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. And let's read this real quick. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. And it reads, you've got to understand our heavenly father loves his children. He loves us so much. And he promises he will take care of us. He will wrap his arms around us. He will teach us to walk. He will teach us his word, but we've got to do certain things. Let's get into it. Chapter 15 of Exodus, verse 26, and it reads, And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and to keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. The healing hand of our Heavenly Father. But he says, before you're going to get all these promises, you got to do something. That if, you got to follow diligently, hearken to the voice of the Lord. Follow the commandments. And we know the blood sacrifices and everything has been done away for now because Jesus Christ became the blood sacrifice of all sacrifices for our sins. Let's go back into Hosea chapter 11, verse 4. And it reads, I drew them with the cords of a man, with bands of love. Can you hear the emotion our Heavenly Father? He loves His children. And I was to them as they that take off the yoke on their jaws, and I laid meat unto them. I'm going to go over to Matthew again, chapter 11, and I'm going to read something. You'll have it here on the screen. So beautiful. The world is very treacherous these days. And, you know, we know that James chapter 4, verse 4 says, You can't be a friend of the world. If you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. We have to come away from those things. We have to come away from the iniquity, sin, filth that's out there in the world. But let me tell you what our reward for that is. And then, yes, we will be with our Heavenly Father in eternity, the promised land of all promised lands, to be with our Father. But I'm going to go over there talking about a yoke. Matthew chapter 11, we're going to start reading at verse 28. This is so beautiful. Come unto me. This is Jesus Christ talking. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Verse 30, listen to this. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Do you hear that? The yoke of Jesus Christ is easy. It's light. There's no burdens of the world on them. When you've got the world's yoke on you, and, it, and if you're one of God's children, it doesn't fit really well. It's too tight. It's bound you up. You're in captivity of things of the world. But when you lay aside those and you put on the yoke of Jesus Christ, he says, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. There is, we can have peace here in this tumultuous time that we're going through. These end times where, where sin and iniquity are out there on a daily basis, in our face, our Heavenly Father sent us Jesus Christ, the gift of salvation, here to show us how we can get through this life without all the scars and, and the puncture wounds of the world. Back into Hosea chapter 11, verse 5, and it reads, He shall not return into the land of Egypt, 
but the Assyrians shall be his king because they refused to return. Now, when, when Hosea is talking here, the Lord speaking through Hosea, it says he shall not return to the land of Egypt. You know, and Egypt is always a, to us symbolic of captivity. But he says, but the Assyrian shall be his king. Now, the Assyrian is a liking to the Antichrist documentation. Isaiah chapter uh, 14, verse 25. You've got to understand that God's t teaching us about the end times now. The Assyrian, the Antichrist, he's coming. He's coming first. If you don't know that and you've been told you don't have to read and study and know what the Word of God has to say because we're going to be gone, they're leading you up into the Antichrist, the Assyrian, Satan, that old dragon's hands because you don't know the truth. And the truth is in Father's Word. Back into Hosea chapter 11, verse 6, and it reads, And the sword shall abide on his cities, and shall consume his branches, and devour them because of their own counsels. Now we know that when, in John chapter 15, verse 5, Jesus Christ, he's the vine, and what are we? We are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same is bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. That's why he's talking about these branches are consumed. Because here in Hosea, the people of the time, just like today, nothing new under the sun. People are turning to every council, every person out there they're looking for a savior we have a savior it's emmanuel god with us we don't look to men for counsel look at what we're look at the mess we're in today just like and we'll get into that in just a few minutes but just like um the children of israel they wanted a king over them they got saul look who we got right now that's a mess that's what our counsels bring. When a nation goes away from our Heavenly Father and turns to men, to organizations, to government, to education, all those hidden dynasties, finance, instead of depending on our Heavenly Father, they are being wrapped up in world and worldly things, not of our Heavenly Father. And even the religious places of today when over 90% of them are telling them they don't have to read and study and know what God's word has to say, listen to a man, that's counsels. And he's leading them into the arms of the Antichrist. Back into Hosea chapter 11, verse 7, and it reads, And my people are bent to backsliding from me, though they call them to the Most High. None at all would exalt him. You know, backsliding heifer. You have to think about, in this very book, Hosea chapter 4, verse 16, Israel is a backsliding heifer, can't get her footing. You know, we're not in the days that you need to be a backsliding heifer. We need to be on our heavenly, be in our heavenly Father's word every single day. We need to be in prayer and meditation we got to know what's going on because the world is absolutely crazy right now. Even I think even well-intentioned people are being led into a lot of fear. Father does not give us a heart of fear. He wants us to depend on Him, love Him, revere Him, fear Him. That's the beginning of knowledge. Not leaning on man and man's understanding. That's a mess. Verse 8. How, sh how shall I give thee up, Ephraim? How shall I deliver thee, Israel? How shall I make thee as Adma? How shall I set thee as Zeboam? Mine heart is turned within me. My repentings are kindled together do you hear the emotions of our heavenly father here he doesn't want his children destroyed you have to understand what um where the places of adma and 
Zeboim are. We're going to turn over to Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 23. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 23, and it reads, And that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burning, that is not sown, nor beareth, nor any grass groweth therein, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. Father says, I don't want to over I don't want to burn these people. I don't want to have to do these things. The the love and the power of Father, and you can hear it in his in this verse. My heart is turned within me. Y'all, you ever had where you, you your insides just feel like they're turning inside out when you have when you're mourning, you're hurting. It's not a good feeling. Our Father has those emotions. He's watching his children go astray every single day, listening to what a man has to say many times. You check out any preacher teacher that says they're coming in. Because Jesus Christ told us in the end days, many will come in my name, preaching and teaching, but not of our Heavenly Father, out of their own hearts and their own minds. Verse 9, I will not execute the fierceness of my anger. I will not return to destroy Ephraim, for I am God and not man, the Holy One in the midst of thee, and I will not enter into the city again you can you can feel and know the emotions of our heavenly father he's not like us i'm so very grateful for that because think about it if you had a spouse out there uh running around on you all the time or your children you write them a letter and they never respond they don't even act like they got it they didn't read it you don't know if they read it or not you know this is the kind of emotions you got to feel that heartbreak the heartbreak, the anger, the hurt. Verse 10, They shall walk after the Lord. He shall roar like a lion. When he shall roar, with, then the children shall tremble from the west. You know, and when I think about a roaring of an, a lion is a great, powerful sound. But we know when we're in our Heavenly Father's word we love him we revere him we serve him best we can that that is not going to make us tremble when we hear that roar of the lord and we know and that when we hear that seventh trumpet blow and we know our we know that jesus christ is here because he doesn't come until the seventh trump seventh seal seventh vial but who comes at the sixth trump? Who comes at the sixth seal? Who comes at the sixth vial? That is 666. That is the number of a man. That's Satan himself. You got to know he comes first. You got to know that it's got to be ingrained in your mind. We wait on our Heavenly Father. Not any man, organization out there. Nothing. We wait on our Heavenly Father. Verse 11, they shall tremble as a bird out of Egypt and as a dove out of the land of Assyria, and I will place them in their houses, saith the Lord. You know, we have nothing to fear. We look forward to the day that Jesus Christ returns here. We, get, we know we have stuff to, that's got to go on. We have signs of the seasons. We know that we are in the season of the generation of the fig tree. We know that. We stay in God's word. We have a personal relationship. And that is the only way to have a personal relationship with our Heavenly Father is through prayer, being in His word, fasting, knowing our Heavenly Father, depending on our Heavenly Father. You know, we, got, we are living in some very exciting times. Very exciting times. Nothing to fear here because we we walk with our Heavenly Father on a daily basis. We stay in His Word. We do His service. So with that being said, that's going to be it for today. We're going to pick up at verse 12 next time.
because it should be the beginning of chapter 12. So we're just going to start at verse 12 next time. So I hope you enjoyed today's teaching. If you did, like, share, and subscribe. And let's get the word out. Like I said, we're going to be in a chapter 11, verse 12 next time. I hope you have a great day and join us again.